Let's design some brand new Pokemon. My name is Tam Valley Productions, and for the last few months, I've been designing a Pokemon region based off of California, Arova. I've designed a set of starters and their evolutions, and even some regional forms for the Arova region and the games they're in the setting of, Pokemon Carbon and Silicon. If you haven't seen those videos, you can check them out below. However, today we're going to make some water types to complement the Arova region. Just like California, Arova will have tons of different marine environments, rivers, lakes, and coasts for water types to thrive. So today I'm going to fill out the Arovian Pokedex by introducing three brand new evolution families, all inspired by various marine creatures, legends, and the ecology of California. So let's get into it. First up, let's check out the northern part of Arova where there's a bunch of rocky coastlines and jagged cliffs. The beaches here are not like what you'd find in Southern California. Here, only the hardiest of marine life can be found, especially if they live outside of the water, like starfish, clams, and barnacles. They all have very unique survival mechanisms that allow them to live in the rough tide pools and sands. So today I wanted to make a marine Pokemon based off of some kind of invertebrate but it would also emphasize a secondary type based off of its method of survival. I initially wanted to do some kind of psychic or dark starfish, but then I decided to make a Pokemon based off of some kind of bivalve. We've already got Cloyster and Shelter, but those designs emphasize the hard shell as its primary mechanism of defense. Instead, I was drawn to creating a much more offensive based version of a bivalve, which I know sounds contradictory. Like, if a creature had a hard shell as a natural defense, why would it do anything but hide in that shell? Well, my reasoning here is because of the siphon. This is a small organ that most mollusk creatures have, meaning oysters, clams, and even snails and squids. It's a fleshy tube-like thing that is physically not very developed. But it does serve a lot of purposes, like respiration and feeding, for these creatures that lack locomotion. The siphon can stretch out of its body or shell and kind of move on its own. It's pretty cool. So I thought it would be a natural translation to a Pokemon design that emphasizes a much more physically developed siphon, one that it could use to hop around the sand, physically fight, or even grab prey. Then it could retreat back into its shell when it wasn't in use. So all of that gave us Brawlusk, from Brawl, Mollusk, and Husk. Brawlusk are tough creatures who burrow in holes on rocky coasts. They hydrate themselves in the rich tides, and they use their muscles as siphons to absorb water and strengthen themselves. To protect themselves against aerial predators, they use their fully hydrated muscles as fists to fight, grab prey, and drag themselves along the sands. Their faces lie obscured in between their shells, which they keep closed at all times with powerful muscles. So these Pokemon are water and fighting type, which like I said is to emphasize the fact that they actively engage in fights and they can hold their own in combat, even against prey that could easily pick it up and toss it around the sand. Here's its habitat by the way. They live in small tide pools across the northern coast of Verova, where they don't often move, and instead they just suck up the waters that the waves bring to strengthen its siphon-like tongue muscle. Almost like a bodybuilder at the gym. I feel like the physical image of a brawlusk running across the sand on its hand siphon would be really funny, but it's also in line with the Pokemon design philosophies while also fitting well into the California-based Arova region. It kind of reminds me of Pukumuku or something like that, since this would be one of the Arova region's versions of those quirky single-stage Pokemon that you typically find towards the middle of the game. Speaking of rocky coasts, let's head further south down the map, where there are tons more dangerous coastlines in Arova. This is Point Conception, which is a jagged peninsula right in the middle of California. The Chumash Native Americans have long believed that this point holds significance as the gateway between the world of the living and the world of the dead, which I found interesting since it's right on the water, which is a physical boundary between the land and the sea. So what if we made a water type that represents that idea of some way, where it's a transition between the physical and the spirit world, and it has elements of both? It seems fitting too, since California has a lot of shipwrecks, so we can make a Pokemon sort of like Delmize, where it's a spirit Pokemon that maybe possesses shipwrecks, and only comes into existence during times of tragedy. All of that gave us Driftbone, from Drift and Bone. Driftbone are not biological fish, but they're said to be the lost souls of those who have been lost at sea. They inhabit driftwood floating aimlessly in the depths off of the coast of Verova, and spend their afterlife forming entire schools that swim together for protection. They preserve their driftwood cores by developing a plasma-like hydrophobic substance. Occasionally, smaller Pokémon will become trapped in this membrane if Driftbone swims through them. So Driftbone are Pokémon that quite literally represent the entanglement between the spiritual and the physical, 
since their consciousness are versions of those who have died at sea, either Pokemon or humans, and their bodies are just random debris found along in the ocean. Side note, I love when ghost-type Pokemon really have weird or dark origins. I hope I've done that here without being too dark for the franchise. But anyway, their bodies are driftwood, which can be found all over California's coast when random trees get their branches snapped off during storms, or when shipwrecks occur, and the loose wood is called flotsam. Pay attention to that idea of shipwrecks in particular, which is the main inspiration behind Driftbone's evolution, Fantasian, from Phantom and Cetacean, the scientific name for whales. Having perfected their plasmic membrane as Driftbone, the sole purpose of Fantasian is to expand their anatomies by enveloping entire shipwrecks, exploring murky seas as they do so. Their energy becomes rejuvenated by all that they capture. Though they're often seen as fearsome creatures by the few fishermen who witness these mighty Pokemon, Fantasians show them compassion, knowing one day that they may protect and bear their souls. So just like Driftbone materializes in the physical form of a small fish like Cod, Fantasian takes the form of a much larger marine mammal, using the debris of entire shipwrecks to build that body. This is to properly defend itself against other Pokemon in the dark ocean surf. I think it would be a great natural rival of Delmise, because they're both ghost-type Pokemon who build their bodies using maritime debris, so they could fight in the ocean for scraps that they find. The shape that Fantasian take is a reference to grey whales, who often live in the northern Pacific Ocean waters. This is their habitat, by the way. I think that they would live in stormy rough waters off the coast of Varova, and Driftbone can be found as a relatively early encounter in the game, and a relatively common one. Whereas evolved wild Fantation are rarer, and they mainly live near Sharpedo Island, my region's equivalent to the Farallons. Oh, and they'd have a brand new ability, Murky Depths. This would lower the foe's accuracy about 3 out of 10 times, when Fantation hits them with a water-type attack. This is a reference to how Fantation's body is not a clear plasma, but instead it holds a bunch of murky water, mud, shipwreck debris, and other deposits from the dark waters off of the Erovian coast. So all in all, I really like the origin of Fantation, which mixes Native American mythology, marine biology, and nautical superstition to create a fairly unique water and ghost type. Finally, let's move down to the southern part of the region to make one more water type evolution today. That's when I noticed a recurring sight on my walk. That's when I noticed a recurring sight on the beaches of California. Palm trees. That's right, these giant trees are pretty much an icon for the southern part of the state. They're very common in coastal cities like Los Angeles and San Diego, even more northern beach or port towns like Santa Barbara, Santa Cruz, Monterey, and San Francisco have countless palm trees all over, all over their waterfronts. I figured I could make a fun grass and water type palm tree Pokemon, with the water part coming from the fact that palm trees are a symbol of coasts, oases, and islands, and the fact that a major type of palm tree, the coconut palm, has coconut water, obviously. For Arova, a region that's based on California, this seemed like the perfect fit. Except, there's one caveat. Palm trees actually aren't native plants in California. Believe it or not, Franciscan monks actually brought these trees from where they grow naturally, which is desert climates and more tropical beaches further south, like Mexico. Then, as LA became a major American city at the beginning of the 20th century, palm trees were adopted once again by city planners for their aesthetic value. So what if I made a Pokemon that referenced the history of palm trees? where they're not originally from Arova, but despite that, they've become a popular and iconic symbol for the region. That gave us Cocopod, from Coconut and Arthropod. Cocopod were brought from Alola as pets, but now they've found a natural home on the beaches of Varova. Their bodies contain a clear fluid that allows them to survive for long periods of time and build comfortable nests in their own durable bodies. They may pinch or squirt water at unsuspecting beachgoers who mistake their fuzzy shells for fruit. Despite that, they're pretty sociable, and they're one of the best companions for young Arovian children. So these Pokemon are mainly inspired by coconuts that grow in palm trees, but also features of coconut crabs, though those aren't found in California either, and they're instead from tropical islands in the Pacific Ocean. That all goes to reference how Cocopod are originally from Malola, just like Execute and Executor, but now they fit in very well to a new climate, due to their physical adaptability and their personalities, which make them very popular with the people of Verova. Overall, I like how I emphasize the coconut aspect over the crab one. It gives Cocopod a cute, but still not overly simplistic design. But inevitably, the adorable Cocopod does eventually turn into something a bit fiercer when it evolves into Arthropom, from Arthropod and Palm Tree. Arthropom are generally more hostile than Cocopod. Both newborn Cocopod and actual fruit resides on the fully blossomed palm tree on its body, 
which they keep safe with its sharp pincers. These hardy Pokemon will burrow nests into sand, leaving only their palm tree exposed to gather sunlight. If you're sitting under a tree and you feel shifting sands, it might be a burrowed arthur palm. The more sunlight its tree gathered, the stronger its grass abilities become. So these guys are just a bit more crab-like, with strong claws and a crab-like face. But they also spread a nice palm tree in their bodies. I think they could be good decoy or mimic Pokemon in the overworld, where they burrow in the sands and they only have their palm trees exposed, which would blend in with real ones. So trainers who bump into palm trees on the southern beaches of Verova might accidentally be disturbing an Arthur Palm, who might spring up from the sand and engage in a wild battle. That might be a fun mechanic. This would be their habitat. Unlike the first two Pokemon I showed today, Cocopod and Arthropom would only be found on the southern beaches in the region. In Arova's equivalents to Monterey, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Catalina Island. So those are five new water types that I think would fit in well to the landscape of Verova. My new Pokemon region based off of California, and the setting of Pokemon Carbon and Silicon. I have a bunch of new videos planned this summer about more Arovian Pokemon, so stay tuned for that next week where I'll be diving first into Route 1 Pokemon. Also check out the other videos in the series if you haven't already. The link is right down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more content.